Nikon V1 mirrorless camera. This is kind of a point and shoot style camera and um, it's gone down a lot in price recently because Nikon just um, said they were going to release a version 2 of this. So this used to have a retail of around eight, nine hundred dollars. Now it's down, you can get it from, I don't know, B&H or something around a little over 400 or in that area with the 10 to 30 millimeter kit lens. Now there are other things you can use this camera for other than just how it comes as a point and shoot but I'm gonna get into that a little later now I'm gonna go over why it is good for I don't know a pro am and amateur combined you know kind of like a lot of different people can use this camera and that's a very good positive for it now as the amateur goes it's it's really easy to use it's kind of like a point and shoot camera you know there's a lot of auto features there's a lot of pick up and go just take a picture if you don't have time to actually you know do a lot of the settings if you're you know into pro dslr you know to get the exact photo you really want you know you really need to set up your camera it's not something you can just pull out of your bag every situation is different requiring you know different ways of using it and to get the best picture you really need to be in manual mode and pick the settings for the actual thing you're taking the picture of so basically this is more of your point and shoot style camera obviously um, for many and it has you know many of the same features as many of the point and shoots have out there it's um, somewhat easy to understand menus and buttons go as far as that uh, it's got a good build quality also but that's not really what this review is about. This review is about this, really. This is basically what makes you want to buy this camera. This is the FT1. This is an adapter that you basically take this off, take your kit lens off, as you can see, mirrorless design with that small sensor. We're going to go more into the sensor and what makes it so special. So now we have this adapter. So now we can put any Nikon F mount lens onto this camera. There are limitations. Um, I have a Sigma it doesn't work with. Um, there are limitations to what this can use, but most of Nikon's pro grade glass, anything that's autofocus, you know, is going to work pretty well with this. So basically, that's the 24 to 70 mounted on a Nikon 1. This adapter changes the game, basically. This is what makes this kind of amateur-driven camera into something that's actually useful for a pro, even. Um, obviously, you're not going to get, I don't know, the top quality pictures you're going to get from a pro-grade DSLR, but it also is super tiny. And we're going to get into that a little later as to what uses this can be used for. And the pro, see, you know, this is for a pro or, uh, you know, somebody who has a DSLR already and is thinking about buying one of these. This FT1 converter, this is what you need to use with the other grade glass, your, you know, your F mount glass. Um, with that, it basically transforms this camera into a very useful tool. In the way that it does, it's it kind of jumps into that, you know, four thirds market with its, it has a sensor of a 2.7 crop. Now let's think about that a little bit. Full frame's obviously a one crop. It basically is the exact, um, you know, 24 to 70. That's what you're gonna get. That's the focal length you're gonna get. With a crop sensor camera, you know, like the most DSLRs are, that are not pro-grade, you have that 1.5 crop, basically, and you have, you know, basically a, a 24 or 25, you know, that lens is going to turn into closer to a 38 millimeter, 39 millimeter lens. This one, it multiplies that almost by three. That's a 2.7 crop. Think about it like this. Um, this lens, 24 to 70, I mean a um, 70 to 200 VR2, you know, this is 2.8 constant aperture, 70 to 200. Put that on this, you get more of a 210 millimeter or 200 millimeter to 520 millimeter. That's the game changer in the fact that, okay, let's just mount it up and you can see
not too big. Now, think about it like this. Professional with a full frame camera, D4, D3S, whatever, and has a um, 400 millimeter 2.8 lens or a 500 millimeter f4 lens, I mean, we're talking about 10, 15 pounds of equipment that's five times the size of this. It's five times the weight, five times the size. This will cover that same focal range at a constant 2.8 aperture. Now, the quality of the pictures may not be as good, but if you're not needing that top quality print, you know, quality for, you know, a big poster size, this is still 10 megapixels and it does a very good job. This is a game changer because that gives you over 500 millimeters at f2.8 in this little package. That's pretty crazy. Now, the sensor is tiny. They've done a really good job. I've taken a lot of sample photos and I'm going to put those up at the end of this video and say the settings I use and you're going to see that it does take very good pictures um, with this combo, with this 24 to 70. I mean, that's the 24 to 70 with this. Now I'll get into this too. Not only does that 2.7 crop help with longer, longer focal distances, it also does that without losing any light. Um, that's another key. There is this isn't like a teleconverter or anything. This is only an adapter, so basically you're losing no light. So another great thing is with a crop, you can use the same um, focusing distance of this lens, but you get that extra millimeters. So you basically this using this lens, it will focus almost to here. So, you know, at 70, that's still pretty good. You got a pretty good close focusing, but it changes the game when you put it on here because you're more like 200 millimeters. So you're almost turning this into a macro lens. And that is one of the um, big features because not only do you have the wildlife that you can capture with this, with the extra focal length, you also have increasing the focal length but keeping the small focusing distance at the same amount. So you're basically turning anything that has a good focusing distance into a macro lens. I mean, this may not be a true one-to-one -one on here, but I'll post another picture later of showing you just how well this does on this camera as far as doing macro work. And um, think about putting a true macro lens on this. You can get way more than one-to-one -one at good quality. So. I mean, those are just two things that, for the price of this, this camera can do. Think about a good macro lens is over $400, and if you use some of your glass you already have as a new macro lens, I mean, that's just one thing that this can do, and this thing can do many things. Now, other than that, you know, let's talk about some of its features and some of the small problems we have. With this, the camera does have autofocus tracking. It has a great autofocus system, very fast. And from what I've heard, it claims to be faster than some of even the um, Pro DSLR cameras. Um, that's just from what I've heard. Um, I may do a few um, videos of, that I've done, sample videos. I'll put it at the end of this video and I'll, I'll use this lens and go back from one thing to another and show you how fast it will focus. It's a good fast focusing system. But um, like I was saying, it does have the autofocus tracking, but it does not work with the FT1 um, converter. All you can do if you want to use this converter with these lenses like in this setup, you're going to have the single focus point and it only stays in the middle. That's kind of a limitation, you know, not huge. It's not going to be totally great for birds in flight that are small. It's going to be pretty much impossible to use. It works really well for, you know, larger things, larger animals, something that's still it has that single focus point in the middle and you're going to be able to grab it. Um, other than that, um, the video mode on this. This is also something I really like. Think about video. Think about video is um, doing it with any nice DSLR. It takes really good video, right? The 
you know, D7000, D800, all of them, they take good video, but the video is always here. Um, I find that really hard to use in broad daylight pretty much any time. I hate taking video with the screen. Now this has, it's a mirrorless design, so it's basically always using the sensor. Now, as you can see, this has, I don't know if you know this guys, but once your eye goes up to this, it cuts off this screen and goes to here. You can take video through the viewfinder and that on bright days, even not on bright days, it makes it a lot easier to focus on video and see what's going on using the viewfinder for video. Now, there, I mean, there's other things about this camera that just go over and beyond what you would think it could do. Um, there are settings from this that will take pictures at um, 1200 frames per second, but it's really low quality. It's basically just taking a video at that. If you do the 1200 frames per second, it's some tiny resolution of like 300 by 200 at terrible quality. But there's actually a 400 frame per second um, uh, setting on this and you can do, I don't know, like a few seconds, maybe up to five seconds of, of a pulled out video that's in slow motion at 400 frames per second. And it, um, it's in quality of 640 by 480. So still not great, it's kind of just, you know, for fun. But there is something that's very useful on this. There is a 10 frame per second, 30 frame per second, and 60 frame per second um, setting that actually takes full quality 10 megapixel pictures at that 60, 30, or 10 frames per second. The problem is, you know, if you're taking 60 frames per second, the buffer um, will, run out of space after about 30 pictures so if you're doing 60 frames per second you only get about a half a second of taking pictures can be useful in situations of sports let's say you're taking a picture of somebody swinging about at a ball at a baseball game um, you might put in 30 or 60 frames per second and just to get that one photo where you're you know having him get connect with that ball or something and hitting it um, it's useful for things like that uh, there's just a lot of good features with this camera and with this FT1 converter, like I said, it puts it basically at a whole nother level of what you can actually do with this camera. Um, I would like to go into some more depth of it. Uh, it gives you your settings. Basically, this turns in, you have your shutter priority, you have aperture priority, you have the P mode for programmed auto, you have manual, full manual, basically. So those settings are there if you need them, and that's very helpful when you're using all this and you really want to control what you're getting. Um, you can use this button here to change the aperture, and to change the shutter, you basically you, you use this other button down here. You spin this wheel, and once it's in manual mode, you can change those both things on those buttons without going into another menu. So. They've thought about it. You um, you get your flash if you, but you have to buy a proprietary flash for the V1. I'm not going to buy it. What I'm using this for, I won't need a flash. Um, you have HDMI out. Probably not going to use that. External mic and there's mic settings for video and stuff like that. USB port on this side. This uses an SD HC card for memory. Um, everything, all in all. For the size of what you have here, I mean, you can throw it in any bag and it gives you a ton of flexibility. Um, as you can see with this lens, it's, it's pretty tiny and basically turns into a camera that you can, you know, let somebody use, let your children use, yet let your wife use or somebody that doesn't, if they don't really want to use your DSLR because it's too big or has too many settings that, or you don't you're going to be using it or something and you don't want to change it all back to auto or something this is a great camera to have I mean you can just let them take pictures and it takes good quality pictures um, guess another thing I want to talk about is the battery it's it's got a battery EN EL 15 same thing as a D800 uses that's great because now I have two can, I mean, two batteries that are interchangeable for my D800 if one runs out, you know, and I only have to use one charger. Also, this is a pretty huge battery for a point-and-shoot camera, yet there is one thing. You would be surprised how much this 
takes. This camera takes a lot of power. You got to think about it. With this adapter, um, you got to remember this is a mirrorless design. So basically, if you're thinking, um, you know, DSLR cameras, it's in live view all the time. So basically, when I have this hooked up to this, um, hooked up to any camera like this, I mean any lens like this, it is basically always running VR, if VR is on, it's always trying to change the aperture, if you're in aperture priority mode, it's constantly doing all that. Um, DSLR cameras don't do that unless you're in live view mode, so basically this will kill your battery pretty fast. Um, I prefer to leave VR off because basically having this camera on, since it's always, it's not a, it's not a mirror camera, it's a mirrorless camera, it always has VR on, so that will kill your battery very quickly. Also, um, it's always adjusting the aperture, which I don't really like that. I don't know if it's going to put more stress on the lenses, because if you have it in aperture priority, basically, I mean, I'm sorry, if you have it in shutter speed priority, which I use a lot with this lens since I'm doing wildlife, it's always going to be a constantly adjusting that aperture because it's in a live view mode. It basically is, ch so anytime you move the camera and it needs to compensate for, for your, um, exposure it's going to be changing the aperture constantly and you can hear that it's going to you know make a noise all the time so it will kill your battery faster um it may even go through batteries faster than the 800 i've been using it a little bit and it already has half a battery so it it needs the battery and it's a good thing it has a good size battery now you know i've gone into all those details i really can't think of too much more to say but basically this is the camera and the FT1 is the game changer on this. It basically gives you tons of functions, whether it's from wildlife giving you that extra 2.7 crop on any lens, or it's giving you that extra focusing distance versus the millimeter, extra millimeter you get uh, for macro. I mean, it's just a very capable camera and for video, it it will do video, I don't know if I mentioned this, but you can take stills, full resolution stills, while you're doing video too. Um, I haven't gotten into all those things, just seems like a very capable camera. And here is on to the actual photos and video portion.